Daniel chapter 3 is a very informative passage of scripture written about 540 to 530 B.C. And many people think that the Bible is outdated. The Bible is old, archaic, full of cobwebs, but it's not. And we learn that there's nothing new under the sun from Solomon. And the very fact is you can find Daniel chapter 3 today in the Laodicean church age. Nebuchadnezzar the king. Now chapter 3 also represents the tribulation period. Nebuchadnezzar being a type of antichrist persecuting and executing Jews. Made an image of gold. His height was three square cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. So, an image of gold, you know, that's the highest buying power. And many people say, you know, today, buy gold, buy gold. Now, I assure somewhere there are Christians, their main God is gold, the collection of gold. And I got to get more gold because gold is the standard being their God at the same time. And Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together the princes, the governors, captains, judges, treasurers, counselors, and the sheriffs, the rulers of the provinces, come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar, the king, set up. So in the Laodicean church age, you have uh, a church start, you have a brand new building, and you have a dedication, and they will call everybody. Even members of the church that have not been there in the longest period of time, they'll call them on the phone, hey, it's been a while, but we're having a dedication come. We got hot dogs for the, and, and chicken and face painting for the children, and we got all kinds of games. up. Come. Some churches have invited the press. Some churches have if I distinguish people of the, of the city or town that they're in, because their building is their God. And we got to have a dedication. Everybody's got to come to the dedication. So, verse 4, the herald cried aloud. Herald, a lot of your church, a lot of your newspapers today, not churches, a lot of your newspapers are called the herald. That comes from the King James 1611 Bible. And that's somebody in, in Daniel's time, you know, he's like, go tell everybody the news. Go tell everybody the news. Go tell everybody in the news. Today we would call it Facebook. Today we would call it the media. Churches today will run to the newspaper. Come, hear about our church. Come. Verse 5, at the time you hear the sound of the cornet, boots, hat box, Sultry, duster, and all kinds of music. You shall fall down and worship the golden image. So get everybody involved in music program. That's Satan. Ezekiel 28. Satan was your original as Lucifer, <clears throat> your song leader in heaven. And guess what? You know where many of your problems for the churches today? It comes out of the music program. And get all the music together. Now listen, there's good godly music and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm talking about the lay to see in church. You follow the lay to see rules. I, I heard the other day there was a church called the, the People's Church. That's the lay to see it, right to the people. And you'll get your drums, and, you, and you'll get your, your saxophone, and you'll start playing rock and roll with the with electric guitar and all that, and you'll allow it. And a little leaven leavens the whole lump. You thought before Christ. I'll show you in AD. And in verse 6, we are full of down words at the same hour, was a kiss cast into a mist of a burning, fiery furnace. You know... There are religions out there that if you don't follow their principle, you don't follow their ways, you are doomed for hell. If you don't join the mother church, you don't join our assembly, 
You don't believe what we do, we'll anaphanize you. We'll cast you into hell. Not God. The religion. The church. And there are Baptist churches out there. You know, you don't do what they tell what you what they tell you to do. You don't follow their rules. You're not baptized the way they're baptized. You don't take the Lord's Supper as they take the Lord's Supper. You don't assemble where you know some people think you can't go to another Baptist church. You know, it's their Baptist church and no other Baptist church building. Notice how I added the word building. You know, it's a heresy that somebody moves away from them. Even though, you know, they move righteously, they move well. I got to fix my argument. Excuse me. Oxygen is not easy. So, there are churches and there are religions and that will damn you if you don't obey and follow their ways. If you don't pray to Mary, you don't pass out our magazine, you don't come to our church, you don't come to our assembly, you don't give to us, you don't follow what we do, you don't follow our creeds, our constitution, whatever you do, you're doomed for hell. That's a shame. Again, therefore at the time when the people heard the sound of the cornet, <coughs> the flute, the harp, sickle, the heart on the sackbook, the psaltery, all kinds of people. And you get the music up. I mean, there are churches out there, you have 45 minutes of a music and 15 minutes preaching. I've been in one. And you, know, you got churches, I've been in, you pop in the CD, and then they, they, they lip sync. They karaoke. The music that's on the CD or cassette tape, whatever they do. I have been churches I've been in. They get they they luxury play the piano. It's not a hymn. And there's been churches I've been in. They get up to sing the contemporary Christian music, or they do the contemporary Christian music, which is not God and not Jesus Christ. And following the music, there's a worship service. Why can't a Baptist church get up, everybody settle, everybody, all right, let's start the preaching. And then have the music service. How about start the preaching, then you go home. Why is the, why is the Baptist church in a ritual that they're all the same, that you must have the music first? You must have the announcements. I mean, I've been in so many Baptist churches, and it's the same thing. It's a ritual of Babylon. It's a shame. So, wherefore at the same time, verse 8, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. There will be somebody in church, when you want to do right, they will run to the pastor. Now, Matthew says, if you have a problem with a fellow brethren, you go to them, number one. I had a pastor one time, tell me, well, there was a couple of people in the church that, you know, they don't like what you do. I said, well, who are they? I, I can't tell you. I said, you go tell them that Matthew says they're going to come to me because no one came to me. And then number two, if if I don't get it right, they don't get it right, then they're to get two witnesses and come. And then number three, they don't go to the pastor, they go to the church. But they run right to the pastor. And if they are clicks of the pastor, he'll protect them, he will guide them, he will, will give them all. But he will not, you know, we're Bible believers, we're King James Bible believing church. Ah, but you don't follow. You need to go talk to the person. I'm afraid to talk to the person. Well, then you don't, you don't settle it. Because God has prescribed a way. And you find out if you want to do right, and you settle it in your heart to be 
a disciple and you set out to do, somebody in your church, and they use an expression, and I'm old, you would rag on you. And that means they would tell on you. They would report you. Even your job. When I worked for the, for the newspaper, there are people always going up to the, to the you know, you know what Sal is doing? You see what Sal is doing? You know? But we're in a book written 540 to 530 B.C. Ancient. Old. Musty. <coughs> <coughs> so, verse 12, certain Jews whom they sent over the affairs of promise, Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Mendigo. They will name you by name. O king has not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou set up. Now, one, one of the, the Babylonian gods of two, of three, in the Laodicean Baptist Church is Esther and Tammuz and Eros. Now, you know Esther. I don't care what Facebook checkers say. I don't care what the fact checkers say. I don't care what the Catholic Church says. Ishtar is Easter. Tammuz is Christmas. Christ Mass. Mary Christ Mass. That's not Christian. That's not Bible. And then arrows, Cupid, Valentine's Day. Roman, Greek, Babylonian gods. And they're in the Baptist churches. And when you start speaking against the holidays and Christmas trees and, and Easter bunnies and and Cupid and hearts, and you explain the truth. Sanctifying by thy word, thy word is truth. Have I become your enemy because I've spoken the truth? Said people will run to the church hierarchy. You hear what Stalin St said about uh, Easter? Something that's true. I don't know how, what, how, what he called it. You know, the, the Haywards don't do Christmas. No, because it's pagan. They don't set up a tree because it's pagan. I'll tell you that to your pastor. I'll tell it to you. It's pagan. I don't care what your school taught you. I don't care what scholarship taught you. The Catholic Church and, and Babylon and Greek and Roman and all those old... Religion will tell you it's okay. I'm going to tell you what God will tell me is okay. I'm going to tell you what the King James Bible says is okay. Problem with the church today, they don't know church history. And they're afraid to preach church history because they may have a Catholic in the audience giving money. Verse 13, they brought the men to the king. They, they, bring you, well, they won't bring you to the pastor. The pastor will call you. And even the human beings in, in a Baptist church can be worshipped. I was called to be a Sunday school teacher in one church. And I had three or four kids. And I... They were young kids, but they were no, they were known enough to write and read, and I understood they were involved in, in Harry Potter and all that other nonsense, and they could quote from movies and on books. So I gave them monthly Bible verses. I would give them four to five weeks to memorize simple passages from the Bible, and they wouldn't. So the pastor's click family, what I did was I sent a paper home for the children with the memory verse for either mother or father to sign the paper to realize 
they understand that their kids have been given uh, memory verses. Well, I was called to the pastor's office. No one came to me. Called to the pastor's office. My heart was set out for those children to learn the Bible verses, and I was no longer a Sunday school teacher because I did that. That ended my Sunday school teaching for the kids at that point. And when we had men's preaching, I would get up and I'd preach a message in the past. Oh, what was I supposed to do? Well, it's kind of funny. If you don't like what I said, the majority of the people liked what I said. They came up to me. So. So they will get upset when you don't regard their gods and their worship. Sometimes you got to sit in a church service and say, you know, okay, just let them do what they're doing. I had something, I was in the church, I fought one time and I fought it, and the guy was wrong. Caused all kinds of trouble and problems. And you know, we ended up leaving that church. And then another church, the same thing came up. I said, you know what, I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm going to pray for the gentleman. I'm going to seek God. If God, maybe God wanted me to tell the other one and not tell this one. But they're wrong. And both of them who would, who would not accept, one of them would not accept the correct teaching. And one, you know, I didn't say nothing to, are going to be have to stand before Jesus and say, why did you tell that crowd the false teaching? And I don't go swinging a hammer. I don't go swinging the axe. If you ask me, I'll tell you. And there have been people that ask me. I had one time we invited over to the pastor's house, and it was Christmas time. We walked in, and this, we were first started going to church. And he walked in the house. He said, "Well, you know, the Christmas trees. It's just I didn't say no." One other time we were in church, and I think it was the same church. And somebody came up to know with another church. We came, somebody came up to them, just sitting there reading my Bible, something, doing whatever. And, you know, we have a Christmas tree. What do you think about a Christmas tree? I'm like. I said, God has me marked for people to know that man has the truth. I was in another church, and we did, we did Jeremiah 9. It was Christmas time. He had a little, little tiny Christmas tree on the piano. Okay. Went from Jeremiah, Jeremiah 9 to Jeremiah 11. We didn't do Jeremiah 10. And I had been assaulted by pastors from my belief. Jeremiah said, well, you know, there's some people who think that that's the Christmas tree and blah, 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 blah. Okay. You'll be charged for false teaching the congregation. Because you're, Paul says not to be ignorant. You're ignorant of history. And I, I put stuff like that on Facebook and Facebook checkers turn around. You're wrong. No, I'm right. I've got documented evidence. I've got the ones who know. And then when you check that information, check the information, find who the source is, you'll find it is the religion that's against the Bible. Uh -huh. So, verse 15 is going to give them a second chance. And then verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, Medigo answered, said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer this matter. If it be so, our God, capital G, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. He will deliver us out of thy hang, O king. Now look how polite they are. Look how respectful they are. There are Christians that would go up to President Biden and scream and terrorize him out. They would whip him. They would tar and feather him. They would put him down. They would, in the name of Jesus Christ, the guy is lost. And give him a, head, a heavy, hearty rebuke for his stupidity. And you're wrong. Scriptures say you're to pray for your leaders. You're to support your leaders. Oh, we support them, but we don't support them. Kind of prejudicial, isn't it? But if not, be known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden which thou hast set. 
Now, you're sitting in church and you're saying, oh, man, this is sin. I've learned this the hard way. I've learned this with years. You're sitting in church, oh, this, this is sin. This is sin. Pray to the Lord. Shadrach, Meshach, and the God dead. And realize God may, change, may not change it. Realize God will give the people what they want to worship. That's the Old Testament. Either Jeremiah or Ezekiel. It may not be what you want. But if you're reading and studying the Bible, you know what God wants. And if they're not reading in the Bible, which many, many do not, well, they're given over to Satan by God. Okay? Don't expect God to say, hey, I pray and I'm doing right and God's going to change it like that. No. And it says now, Nebuchadnezzar was pure, full of fury. Yours stand up for God in Jesus Christ and the King James Bible is going to make many in the Laodicean church age angry. I got a pastor of a Southern Baptist church all angry with me because I sent his entire congregation pamphlets and tracts about the King James Bible compared to whatever Bible they had. I want to do right. He didn't want me to do it. And he got angry. I didn't get you. Thank you very much for the love of the people you want to know. I'm upset. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we're going to stand up for God whether we win or whether we lose. But whether we win or lose, we're still going to win with God. And you may be in that circumstance in that church. There may be no King James Bibles in your area here in the NIV, whatever kind of Mickey Mouse, but whatever. Pray to God. If there's no other King. If there's a King James Bible, then go to it. But no church is perfect. But you got the Babylonian church in it. So he commanded the most mighty men that were in the army to volley Shadrach, Meshach, and men to go and cast them in the burning, burning fiery furnace. These men were bound in their coats and hoses and hats and other garments were cast in the midst of the burning fire. You might be church discipline for your true beliefs. I was in a church and for BBS, they decorated everything. Too much. And when you're trying to sit in church, and you're trying to listen to preaching, you're trying to listen to the Sunday school teacher, and you've got all kinds of junk. And you got a plastic playhouse up on, this, up on the altar, which is now a stage. I walked in there, I saw all that stuff, and I turned my family around, we said, we're gone. We're not going here today. And the pastor phoned me. He said, hey, what's going on? Everything okay? I said, listen, that, that, your church has a distraction with the VBS. It's too much. We'll be back next week. He's like, no, you don't need to come back anymore. No, we'll be back next week. No, don't come back. And then about two or three weeks later, I got this long form of all these things that were a problem. Including one because of the bumper stickers I had on my car about, you know, a dog being smarter than your average child. And a dog is pretty much smarter than some of these average children. You know? But that upset him. Don't come back. De-churched. I got a pastor mad at me because when we were going there, they told me 500. We left Sunday we didn't go Sunday morning. They don't five one. And what we do is we go on International Boulevard, right by the mall, and we sit there. We plant ourselves for seven hours. And my family passes out gospel tracts, we hold signs, and I preach off and on for seven hours. Okay. 
And there's many churches there and the Jehovah Witnesses. There's many people there witnessing the gospel. And I don't know what guy gets from that. But I know he's pleased. But the church got all upset. The pastor got upset because I wasn't there to hear his message. Stop. Sometimes witnessing to the lost is more better. And with his preaching, I didn't miss much. And it says, verse 25, He answered said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and these have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. So your life, with Jesus Christ might be a testimony to a lost man. Because the life of, of Daniel and the life of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Nebuchadnezzar will get Old Testament saved. Later. I believe Nebuchadnezzar is going to be in heaven. He may have done wrong, so did we, so did I. And then they got right. He got right with God by the testimony of Daniel, by standing up, Daniel did. And then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego standing up became a testimony, and when you stand up and you don't raise a fuss and you are polite, some people may get right. Some people may get saved. And that will anger a, a, a church because now they're going against the flow. So what I want to show you too now is get my Babylonian gods. Okay. Murdoch. You ever hear Murdoch? He's a Babylonian god of Jupiter. And you know how interesting people are in Jupiter. Okay. Okay. And he's a chief god, chief of the gods, Murdoch. Okay. Nabu, N A B U. He's the god of Mercury. Now, in Star Wars, Nabu is N A B O O. I don't think that's by accident. I don't think that's by accident. I don't know. They say there's a point in time that Nabu could have taken over Murdoch. Nana. N A N A. You ever hear somebody call their grandparent Nana? Also Sin, S I N. That's the moon god. Well, that's the god that's worshipped by the Muslims. That's the guy. That's the guy that's. I forget if it's North or South Carolina license plate. That's the god of uh, of NASA, along with the planet, which we'll talk about. U two U T U, the god of the sun. He's the son of Nana. Twin brother of Inanna. I-N-A-N-N-A. -N 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 That's interesting. Alongside with Inanna, you two was the enforcer of divine justice. Okay. We'll get to that. Inanna. Oh, here we are. I-N-A-N-A. -A -A -A. N-N-A. 
Ishtar, I-S-H-T-A-R, Easter, the God of Venus. There's your Easter. She's the deity of sexuality, love, prostitution, and war. The morning and evening star. Some put her as the daughter of Nana. There's her Easter. Nutura. N-I-N-U-R-T-A is the god of Saturn. Everybody knows about Saturn and its ring. Do you realize there are planets that have rings also besides Saturn? Neptune is one of them, I believe. But when you think of planet and rings, you think of Saturn. I think. No, Jupiter is the one that's red spot. Yeah, Saturn with the rings. The god of Saturday. Saturday is not in the Bible. Neat girl. N-E-R-G-A-L. The God of Mars. Well, we all the things on Mars today. The rovers. He's associated with fire. Fevers. Plagues and war. He also is after the Supreme Court of Murdoch, Nabu, Nabu, and Sin. Dumb Uzzad, Tamu, you'll find Jeremiah, T A M M U Z. Tamu. He's the Mesopotamian god of shepherds. He's a consort of Inanna. He's also in charge of agriculture and the growth of plants. He's associated with springtime when the land is fertile. He dies during the summer when the land is dry and barren. Where people mourn his death. Jeremiah. Let's see if there's any more important ones. I think that's about it. But you got to come to realize that there is in the Laodicean church age and the other church ages too, there are the gods of Assyria, Nimrod, Babel, Genesis 10, Babylon, Rome, Greece, Roman and Greek gods and mythology is taught in your school. And the Bible says thou shalt have no other god besides me. And when you're worshiping Easter, and that's a goddess. And when you're worshiping Christmas, it's a god, small g-o-d. It's also a Roman Catholic holiday, the representation Mary. And the lie that they teach about the birth of Jesus 
where it, it completely denies the scripture saying the shepherds and the three wise men showed up. That's not scripture. And what you got to do is when you are studying the scriptures, when you're looking at what you're doing as a Christian, now you can't change the calendar. Sunday is for Baal, the sun god. That's in the Roman Catholic Church. And each of the days of the week are, are for gods. Saturn, Saturday. I believe January is Jupiter. Now, if we go by the Bible, first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh day. That's the Bible. Nothing wrong with that. How come the church doesn't celebrate the feasts and holidays of the Jewish people? They they declare, oh, that's wrong. You know, you know that's Old Testament. That's under the law. Yeah, but it's coming back in tribulation. Come back in the millennium, and it's coming back in the eternal life. What's wrong with serving and worshiping and honoring the Passover? And when Passover happens, your church talks about the Passover and teaches about the Passover and the things you preach about the Passover and the Feast of Weeks and the Feast of Tabernacles. Why don't you get involved with that? Why are you more for the Babylonian than you are for the Bible? Because the Bible has celebrations and feasts that are ignored by the church. Not one place did Paul honor a, 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 a feast of sin. And a couple times he went to Jerusalem, he made sure he went to Jerusalem on the feast day. You write that down. Mark it with your highlighter. The church today is surrounded to where I call the Baptist church today Catholic Baptist or Baptist Catholic. You got the rituals just like the Catholic Church. Satan has snuck into the Baptist Church, the Catholic Church. He has devised a system of the false gods of Assyria, Babylon, Rome, and Greek into the church. And the Christians enjoy those more. I mean, because the average person that goes to church is Easter or Christmas. Two pagan holidays. Look it up. Study it. Plain and simple. 